All right. So uh, last time, uh, Andres uh, was discussing uh, chapter number two, which is the chapter that talks about uh, uh, certain uh, commands or functions that you can use to visualize, right? Visualize your uh, time series. And uh, we agree that we were going to do an exercise, okay? Exercise uh, number nine, which is the one that I have in the screen. And I, I just, I'm, just, I'm just going to read it. Uh, using the following graphic functions, and those are the functions that were discussed in this chapter, chapter number two, and exploring features for the following time series. And it gives you, you know, a couple of suggestions for the time series included in the, the package, FPP3. And uh, after, you know, you do all this, uh, all the visualization and exploration, then you should be able to answer, you know, a couple of questions. For example, can you spot any seasonality, uh, cyclicity, and trend? Uh, what do you learn about the times, the, the series? You know, what, what is the patterns? Or what is the insight that you can uh, visualize uh, about, about this series? Then what can you say about the seasonal pattern, patterns? And if you can identify any unusual years, any anomalies, et cetera, okay? So what I recommended is that uh, each of us, uh, you know, to have a, a more varied uh, uh, outlook on this exercise, what, uh, what I suggested is that you pick two, a time series. I mean, you can do it. If you have time, you can do it all, all, all of them, but at least two, so you can then feel a little bit more uh, uh, at ease with uh, these functions and how to gather uh, information from your time series that eventually will be useful for modeling and for uh, forecast. Okay, so. Uh, I want to give you, you know, uh, an opportunity, you know, so that you can start with which were the time series that you that you picked. You can, you know, I, I think that the time because it's only one hour. I think if if we just talk about one, that will be. I think that will be enough because you know what we're going to be discussing then. If by any chance, you know, we coincide if you want a time series, then it's going to be a little, a little more, more exciting, right? Because you know you can see it one way, another person can see it another way. Uh, so uh, that's the introduction of this session. So who, who wants to begin? I can, I can start, can? I can begin if, you, if you'd like. Okay, excellent. excellent. Uh, Sure. Uh, I well, I only did one mm -hmm. of the of the series, which was the yeah. U.S. employment, the total private employment. Okay. And um, but maybe should I share my screen? Perhaps that would be better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. Is that working? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Maybe if you can if you can zoom it just a little bit. Sure. Okay, excellent. Like, okay. Good. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I yep, yeah, like I was saying, I, I I picked US total employment. And what I did well and, and I used the functions that that uh come with the package, the FPP3 package. So uh, I, I remember that last time we talked about it, and then they are as I understand, as I understood, wrappers essentially for ggplot. So, um, e, so what the first chart I just used autoplot, and the first chart which you can see right here, it shows you that there is obviously a trend. Uh, I mean, I, I I guess you can see it's the entire series. It's only private employer employment because on that on that data set there were several different series so 
um, the exercise suggested, first use total employment. And it goes between 1940 and, and 2019, September of 2019 in a, on a monthly basis. So it's pretty high frequency data, I guess. And the, there are two things that I think are notable in this chart. The first one is that we can see a clear trend upwards, right, in the number of employees. Now, um, I would imagine that, th that, like, without just looking at it, I would imagine that that kind of trend would probably correlate quite closely with just basic demographics, right? If the population of the United States is growing, it's probably growing at a similar trend. And... Um, so that, yeah, that's what I would expect. Expect So we'd probably need to do a few more analyses before we can actually make any inferences from what we're seeing, but there is an upwards trend. And the other thing is that if you look closely at the, at the curve, there, it is quite jagged. So you can clearly see that there are these little sub- curves i would call them i don't know it's just uh it is a, it is a jagged curve there is a, a clear um cyclicality to it right um so the next chart that i went uh, went with was the seasonal chart right so uh before i show you the code i did i saw two things uh well First, by just using GG season, you get the entire series, right? And this isn't, I mean, it doesn't look great, but you get the entire series plotted. And when it plotted, and when that happens, there, there, it's, there's so much data and it's so close together that um, you can't really see much. So I did two things and I, I, I tried to put them side by side is that First, I plotted the entire series from 1940 to 2019. That's on the left. And I unfortunately didn't have time to clean these up. But uh, And on the right, I just split the, the time series starting uh, on, I think it was 2000. Yeah, starting on 2000. And that lets you see a little bit clearer um, that there is the, a seasonal aspect to, to these series i mean you can clearly i wish they, these were a little bit clearer but you can clearly see that the that there is a a the, the, the series grows and at each each one each year the series grows between the beginning of the year and towards the middle of the year then it kind of plateaus that's a there's a little dip it looks looks like it's at the end of the towards the end of the summer and then it 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 starts going up again. And you can also see some anomalies, some outlier, outliers here at the bottom, but um, that appears to be more or less the the yeah the the, the seasonal behavior of uh, private employment. Um, now, I started thinking about it, and 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 does it does it show in the summer? I imagine that there are a lot of um, services industries that are seasonal that only take a, that only work throughout the summer. Um, there's also a lot of the, the first thing that came to my mind for especially because not just this peak, not just this growth, but but the summer plateau and then the dip. I thought about uh, college kids, at least the you know, and how. They find summer jobs. They work. They work through the summer, and once class, and even high some high school kids, and once once uh, classes resume, they go back to school, and then you you get this this dip. That's one thing that I, that if I if I were to start just build coming up with hypotheses before actually looking at the data. The third chart is the. Um, Sorry, uh, third chart is the lag, is it? Can't remember. I think the third chart is a lag chart. Uh, did I not? I didn't echo that, sorry. Um, right, so this third chart, M3, 
Yeah, it's the um, it uses the Gigi sub series, right? And what it does is that it splits the data by sub uh, segments. So all the data in January, all the data in February, all the data in, in um, April by so yeah, it splits it by by a, each month, uh, and then it, it plots against the year or by year. Um, you can see an interesting. I mean, you, you can clearly see the 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 trend once again. How how year uh, month over month. So January between January nineteen forty and January twenty twenty, which is the, just the very first column, you can see the trend up, the upwards trend. Um, but then the blue line in the middle kind of shows you that there is that seasonal component that we talked about, right? How um, how it starts to go up and then just dips back down. So that's a, yet another way to look at the data. And then the final one, and frankly, I don't really understand uh, the, the, sorry, the, the yeah, the, the last two ones. Um, the first one is the, the lag. And maybe, um, I don't, yeah, I don't understand what, what I'm looking at. <laughs> I understand how it works under the hood, but I don't really know what it, what it is that I'm looking at. Um, and uh, same with autocorrelation. So, um, right. Uh, I can, I can, uh, shed some yeah. light there. Okay. So, you know, you have a time series, right? Where you have your, your periods could be days, weekly, monthly, in this case, it's monthly. Then you have your values, right? You know, the, the number of, uh, of employment, prior employment. So what happens is that the lag one, what it's telling you is that that series of values, how correlated or how, you know, how uh, close it is, okay? With a shift of that value to one period. Okay, so for example, if we pick the 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 value of uh, um, January of 2020, okay, January 2020, we're going to compare lag one with the previous value, okay, December 2019, and then we're going to do the same thing with lag two. We're going to compare it two periods before, and then three periods before, okay. So that number, that 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 visualization, what it tells you is how well that shift in those values correlate. In other words, you know, it it explains correlates with you know the values at the present time. Okay, uh, this is very important for models uh, that use lag. For example, ARIMA uh, model for time series. Uh, it uses lags in, you know, in the mechanism to, uh, you know, to do a forecast. Other models, uh, you have to provide the lag. For example, if you're going to use a traditional machine uh, model, like for example, linear regression or uh, boosting a tree base, then you have to provide uh, the lags. But we're going to see that more in the modeling. Okay, right now, uh, what you have to see is how well those shifts in values, if I shift one, if I shift two, if I shift three, how well that explains my, my, my present, you know, the, 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 the lag zero, which is the, the, the value that I'm trying to try to understand. So, does that help? Yeah, it does, it does. But uh, so, mm -hmm. so, no, I, I understand that. How, do, how would you interpret what we're looking at right now? So, what do, well, what, what, what I interpret is that because that line is almost perfect okay. for lag one, so I can say that lag one has a very high correlation, autocorrelation mm -hmm. with lag zero, with with you know with with, with t zero, right? Okay? The same thing with lag two, lag three. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see other examples because this one is kind of you know uh, yeah. then. You know, if you go to lag seven, lag eight, lag nine, then you see a little bit of divergence, right? But it's not that much, right? Right, right. But right. sometimes you see, you see, uh, you know, weird things here. For example, you see lag one going one way, 
lag four going another way, okay, in the inverse <laughs> uh, correlation. So you can see all these, uh, you know, interactions between those shifts, the lags, and your your you know your, your values, your T zero. Okay, right. I mean th this one is pretty uh, pretty yeah, obvious they're, yeah, that they're very, that uh, there's correlation almost on you know on, until lag. Let's put until lag five, lag four, lag five. Okay, but lag six and lag seven and so forth. Then you see a little bit of divergence, especially in one point, right? There's like a little nudge there, right? In lag seven, lag eight, and I believe that corresponds. You know, if you can go up. Okay, that corresponds, I believe, no, 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 no not that much, not that much, uh, Andres. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, there, there, the seasonal, the subseries, uh, the one with the subseries. Yeah, right there. I believe that that notch that you are seeing in that, you know, perfect line, I believe it corresponds to that period where you have a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of dip, okay? You know, you're not seeing a straight line. There's something that happened in a period right there, okay? Right. Where you see that that black, you know, that black scribble there yeah. in the subseries. That's uh, probably, probably probably something happened there. Yeah, that's probably a global financial crisis. Uh, exactly, uh, a recession. You know, yeah, uh, pande pand pandemics, right. pandemics, uh, yeah. things like that. Yeah, right. So. That that period, you know, is going to be a uh, key to investigate what's happening, and maybe you need more uh, more signals, right? More signals to try to, uh, you know, uh, get a good forecast within that period. Okay, because remember, when you do a forecast, let's say that you're doing a forecast for the next year, right? For right. the next year, so you have to see. If there's seasonality, if there are trends, if there's some event that could affect, you know, that particular, okay? Uh, yeah. Are you hearing a background noise? No, okay, good. 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 Okay, good. Uh, apparently, good. The, okay. The, 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 the earphones, you know, are canceling that. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, no, it works well. So, so if I understand, so, okay, so, so that if we look at lag nine, for example, on this chart, mm -hmm. and we see that nudge that you're talking about. Right. That means that the most recent observation does that at that particular point, mo most recent observation is less autocorrelated with correct. the nine with the ninth lag compared yes. to okay. Yes, correct, correct. Right. In that particular, you know, uh, period of mm -hmm. of time, uh, the, definitely there's a dead divergence. It's not going straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so visually you can see it that hey, there's something that happened. Okay, and we have to investigate that right. because that could be something that it could be repeated, right? right. You know, it could, it could it could be it could be season. Right. Okay. Understood. I might I might uh, like to um um uh, say my interpretation. If, if you can hear me, uh, with my can you hear me from okay? Uh, so I see the lag. So the lag uh, uh, interpreting the changes, so the shift within time periods. So if we look at the last one uh, available, like lag like nine, we can see. Lag like nine, we can see clearly the noise that you were talking about, uh, the difference. So what happened? since uh, January to December, how things changed within the month. So basically, the lag lets you uh, visualize. So um, you, you need to, to find out what's the best lag that uh, is able to show you um, the changes that might happen. So uh, in this case, we, we start seeing this growing uh, within the month, uh, showing you that this bit here is the, the, the bit that is more um, uh, clearly changing within the month. The frequency, we are talking the frequency about the number of employees, 
So that, that, that uh, class of numbers um, within the years and the months, okay, uh, from January to uh, September, because this is like, I'm not sure if it's September or October. Um, I think it's September, yeah, right? This is, it, it looks like uh, one month, but we, we don't have any months, so the uh, uh, previous to January. So the first one is the same, and then it, it starts adding the lag for, for uh, so the changes for the second month, and then the other month, and the other month. So you, you finally can clearly see that this notch is growing within the, the months of the year. I, I will say like that. Okay, understood. So la when we talk about the number of lags, is that between is that between January and nine and September, or is that between 2019 and 2000? You have to go nine periods. Nine periods from the, the first the, from the value that you're starting. Okay. okay. So if you're starting in January, you have to count nine periods. So it will be something like April there. Okay, or even March. Okay. Okay, so we are you're, you're, you're going, you're going backwards. Right. You're yeah. going backwards. Because we, and yeah, then but... also the function will tell you, for example, okay, this value, uh, you know, any particular value is going to be lagged throughout the whole the whole series, right? Okay. So for example, it's going to start in March, but then it's going to continue. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to continue. So it's kind of, you know, if you see the columns, you mm -hmm. see that the first one is going to be an, an, an eight for lag one, and then you have the same series. Then for lag two, you have two NAs, okay, two blank spaces, and then the whole series, et cetera. And that's what it's, 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 it's doing, okay? It's comparing each of those values, which is of, you know, the ones that are, you know, to the right, okay, that are, that are shifted. And that's where it's cal it calculates, uh, you know, uh, a, a number. Which is in autocorrelation, you can see it better because it gives you it gives you a number. Here is just mm -hmm. visual that you are seeing that lag one apparently has a, almost a perfect uh, correlation, not like lag eight or lag nine, which there's some divergences there. Okay, so if I understand correctly, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry mm -hmm. if, I, if I if if you guys have to repeat this several times, but if I understand correctly. Mm -hmm. Lag one means one month of lag. So each line, each one of those lines, I say the purple line, the first one is that for the entire series. Correct. Subset of the series where we only look at January data points. Mm -hmm. Right. We're looking yes. at the correlation between those January data points and the December data points of the, of the day before and 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 backwards and backwards and backwards okay. so so it would be the set the, the correlation between January 2019 if that's say the last year and January and mm -hmm. December and then January 2018 mm -hmm. and December January 2017 exactly. all but, the way down to 1940 okay correct? you can see it this way let's let's start a, let's start at December okay the end of the year mm -hmm. so the lag one is going to be December 2019 to November 2019. Mm -hmm. November 2019 to October 2019. October 2019 to September 2019, because you have a series. It's not only one number. Okay. Got it. But it, then when it when when it when it plots each line, why why is the C, why is the legend saying January? Does it mean that it just starts in January? Or does it mean is that subsetting only well there, there are a bunch January. of lines? It's not only January. Right, no, no, it's of a bunch course. Of I'm, lines. I'm, of course, no. Yeah. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the legend, right? Right. So the legend right. tells so you the have purple all line. Those, you have all those lines in that leg. They're, they're all all bunched up together there. Correct. 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 No, no. What okay. I'm saying is, let's uh, think maybe, about just maybe, one maybe, of these lines. Uh, maybe sorry. Uh, uh huh. It's, it's a bit like so you like starting. Yeah, there, there's all months because you can see here the, the yellow line, which is December. Okay. But then, mm -hmm. so it started from, they, they are all the same, and then adding lags, so the changes within the month. Right. Okay. Right, so, so that, that lag one 
okay? And this line is going to be, for example, in general, it's going to be all the January values, okay? All the January values lag from a starting point. Then the Ferrari is going to be all the Ferrari values starting from that point two, okay? Just like one, just one period only, okay? But you have all those lines. The problem is that because they're all, you know, sandwiched together, you don't see it. Right. No, that that well, but they are there. In fact, you know, in other in other uh, time series here, you can see all kinds of lines there. <laughs> okay, all kinds of uh, different correlations between mm -hmm. you know like one only like one. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it, but but this is good because yeah. it it is important to understand you know the lag. Yeah. I yeah. Frankly, I, I think I'll need to read a little bit more about it because, uh, but yeah, but thanks, thanks guys for explaining. <laughs> sure. um, and then the the last one that I I, I plotted mm -hmm. is this one, is the out auto correlation function. Um, again, we've got the lags, the number of months, and and I guess it's similar to this one in that. Right. We're looking at we're looking. Okay, but that one how, it gives it gives you the number. Okay, right. so. You can see that lag zero, which is, you know, the values against itself is going to be always one, right? Yeah, of course. Then yeah. lag so. one is going to give a value that in this time series is very near uh, uh, one. So it's highly correlated. As mm -hmm. like, so you can see, once you get more lags, okay, get more shifts, then it starts, you know, descending. Okay, so this one is a little bit easier to interpret than the yeah. other one. Okay, because in the other, you have all those, you know, lines there. Okay, and you want to see how well those lines, you know, uh, you know, are associated within the period. Here, you can see a number. So, for example, uh, remember correlation, right? Correlation between two variables is how well one explains the other, right? How well one explains the other. So, lag one really explains very well. Uh, you know, the value that we are interested in and, you know, and a couple of lags too, so forth. <laughs> right. So if this, I mean, if, if this, if, if we're not seeing this drop down, is it, if, if I'm looking at this as the, like the if you join these points, the, the tip of each one of these mm -hmm. horizontal lines, right? and is that, and if that's the autocorrelation function, if we're not seeing that drop all the way down to zero, it means that it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not a stationary series, right? Is that the interpretation? Is it, it just means that it's, um, uh, that, that's another, that's another, uh, uh that definition. Okay. Mm -hmm. That you have to, you, you have to do uh, with a test. Okay. okay. Uh, because the stationary is also uh, stationary series are an assumption for the ARIMA model uh, right. too. Okay, but let's stay with the autocorrelation first. Okay, and then you know maybe we can discuss uh, later the stationary. But remember, this is more for ARIMA. Okay, mm -hmm. other models you don't have to you know you 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 don't have to use that information. Uh, you know, to input into the model. In ARIMA, you have to, okay? You have to do some stationary tests and all that to make sure that the ARIMA model, you feel like it's a checklist. You feel all the assumptions, right? For mm -hmm. for the model. Okay. All right. No, I, the, the, yeah, the only reason is, like, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, the way the way I thought about it is that it, it it's just a way to show that this has a trend because if, if I, it's another way to test for a trend if it doesn't, like if, if if your autocorrelation doesn't die off essentially, but um, right. But yeah, anyway, but definitely yeah. this series, as as you saw in the plot, this it series has really trend. has a trend. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a steady trend upwards. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Yep. So that's what I have. Um. Yeah, I don't know who wants to. Good discussion. <laughs> okay, uh, it doesn't matter to me. So, if you want to, uh, um, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I can do after. Uh, uh, 
No, no, uh, go, go ahead, Federica. Go yeah. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, there you go. So what I did it is basically playing with um, this data set. Okay, so we can see what's happening. So employment, we did it. So I, I don't know if you have any preferences. Uh, I don't mind. So if you like, do you have any preferences? Do you like to look at Australia Productions, Felt, or PB, P, PBS, or US Gasoline? I don't mind. Uh, let, let's look at the bricks because uh, that's the one that I, that I did. Okay. The, 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 the brick production, yes. Oh, okay, so let's let's have a, a quick look at this um, sorry, production. Okay, we have. Um, uh, if you can cannot see, if you cannot hear, press that button. Okay, so this is the data set. We we have uh, this time information which is already done. So. In time series is already made uh, as a quarter. So each year is divided by a quarter of the year. Then we have uh, um, information about some um, products, okay, like beer, tobacco, bricks, cement, electricity, and gas. So we're now focusing on bricks and um, to make things easier. What I did is I just select the two um, uh, the, the two um, vectors, so it would be like um, easier to see what what we are going to do. Uh, then first thing we can use an auto plot and see what's happened, and uh, it does automatically select uh, device as a brick. Uh, in the in this case, so let's see here. Yeah. Uh, maybe you cannot see. Uh, can you see uh, the charts? Yeah, yeah we can okay. see it. Yeah, yeah. No, because um, okay. So here we we have a normal. Uh, so like a little bit skewed uh, distribution, but uh, mainly uh, a normal trend picking up. Uh, um some point in time uh, we 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 can now see that it's focused on about 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 uh, um so we are going from the 1960s to the 2000 let let's say uh, so middle of uh the trend is picking up the uh, um the 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 highest point so it's going up to Yes, but and then slowly gone down. Um, it's supposedly so. If we do a quick like um, uh, uh, prediction, we can uh, most probably say that uh, it might uh, stable, stably going down. Okay, uh, but it's not said uh, because we we started very low, uh, and we are talking about bricks so we see that uh, uh there's been a quite uh, uh very fairly increase and then something changed okay we can even see that there is uh, uh this main trend repeating itself as you can see so the first little uh the skewed normal trend um in the uh, at the central point of 1760, and then again, uh, this uh, this repeating again, and then again, and now here something happened. Um, uh, so basically, uh, it, it, there, there is a sort of uh, um, uh, stable frequency uh, repeating uh, within uh, a certain period of time, number of, certain number of years. Okay, so um, uh, we can even, um, if we want to, uh, like 
have a, a quick look at what happened if we do like GG season. Again, it selects automatically uh, the brick and uh, remove 20 rows containing missing values. It does automatically. Uh, we don't see the zoom though. We only see the, the, the plot on the on your oh, on your that, console, that, on that your was, ID. That, that was that was my question. Uh, sorry, yeah, I misunderstood. But I mean we could still see we could still see what you were showing, it's just not not on the same. Okay. Right. Uh so uh basically here uh with gg season now instead of focusing on a certain number of years so that repeating themselves uh, as we've seen uh before here i was showing that this for example first um little uh uh, trend here. It's, it's it's like repeating again here and then again. Then something happened here, but mainly you can see that there is the main trend repeating itself within a certain number of years. Okay, so now instead of focusing on a group of years, uh, we we focus on quarters of the year. Okay, and then these lines are the years so now we see that within the quarters of a year there is a, a trend which is quite stable uh, besides the fact that it is growing in terms of frequencies uh, within the years so we can see that uh, the the orangish values uh, are for the lowest years and then the highest so like 2005 is stay in the middle so we have seen that the the the, the trend was like let, let's see campanula okay doing like that so here we can see that starting low uh going up and then going back again so this purplish lines are the peak uh, of the, the queue that we have seen before. We can even uh, uh, look at the system. Well, that's what we can say about the quarters. So if you, if you have like focus on the second and the third quarter, you might see some changes that are different from the first and the fourth. So the so you see that uh, it peaks a bit on the middle part of the year. Uh, and then, so the, 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 the main trend repeats them itself, okay? If you just look at this peak here, you see that uh, within the uh, 40, uh, 40 years, this little bit that started, um, it's repeating them itself. Okay, then uh, let's have a look what's happened if we do the series. Can I, can I, can yeah? I interrupt you? Sorry. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you go to the other chart? Because I just thought of something that I wanted yeah. to do. The, yeah. So one, one thing that when I when I plotted this seasonal chart of, of the employment, one idea that I had at that one one thing that I, th I thought about doing at that moment at that time was to index every single year to one year, say to mm -hmm. 1980. I don't know whatever, uh, so that we lose that that difference that that uh, the. That divergence uh, year by year, that tr the trend component, and just plot them all mm -hmm. on the same, you know, the same units, if you will, or the same, and and and, may, and I thought that that could be a way to see to easier e easily see that um, that uh, seasonal 
idea. I don't know what if you guys have any thoughts about that. Uh, yeah, you could you could do that, uh, especially when you know the scales are different. Okay, uh, you can uh, you know standardize the range, you know for for each of the of the years, and then try to compare. The problem is that uh, 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 right now this chart, at least you can see the ups and downs, right, of each of the years. In the chart that you put everything in the same you know, range, then you need a mechanism to try to pick which one is the one that you want to see. Because each everyone is going to be overlapping. Like the lag, the, the, the lag uh, uh, graph that, that we saw there, uh, they're going to be overlapping. So there has to be a, kind of an interaction in terms of which, you know, uh, uh, at one point, which of the years you want to, you know, you want to observe again against the others. But yeah, that that's a that's a mechanism that that is used for when you bring, for example, uh, let's say that you're studying temperature, right? And then you have a factor, uh, let's say humidity, uh, or or barometric pressure, pressure. So the ranges are really different. So what you do is that you put them in the same scale, in the same range, and then you can compare. Okay, and see if the ups and downs coincide, or or maybe they're inverse, etc. Good point. Good point. Okay, uh, let's see uh, if we um, I'm looking down uh, quarter. Okay, so no, it's a bit. Uh, let's do like this. Okay, let's say that I want to see like uh, 95. Okay, uh, I need to see like oh, 85. 85 quarter one, if I can do that. 85. Quarter one. Oh, I'm not sure if it's going to it is not the best. Because this is quarter, maybe I should well anyway, uh let let's let's have a look at what's happening if we uh, have a look at this sub series and again it selects uh, bricks okay so now see that the, this uh, trend is repeating even within quarters and within the years so this is from 1960 to 2000 the the main trend as we have seen. Like here, this is the main trend within all quarters, but uh, uh, this is quarter one. Okay, so and this trend is repeating within all quarters. The things that changes, but again, it's like some power because it's going up and then going down. Most probably, we can uh, imagine that. This is uh, within the year, it has grown or a bit, but not that much. And um, uh, so this is uh, the uh, average value. And uh, it's a clear a, a repeating trend within within uh, um, within time. So I think it's uh, um, uh, you can say um, that uh, it's it, it's a normal trend uh, skewed. On the left, and it's like 
Schlanket. So here it's like uh, like it's something like it's interrupted, like something that should happen after uh, afterwards, but it doesn't happen because the borders uh, repeat themselves in the same in the same way. So I expect that maybe in the future something. Will happen. But um, let's have a look at what's happened. Uh, I'm I'm doing like um, having, having a look at how how they change it within the borders. If I add a, uh, a, a, a quarter period um, within the years, and here is a bit confusing thing. So now uh, there is a little, you, you, you cannot, you cannot actually use that much because it, they all campanula uh, and this this campanula trend is repeating, it's lagging and uh, um, um, when you you add the changes within the borders, because basically this for um, you start from this is your starting point, okay? This is like the starting point. As like time is stop, stop. Okay, you um, you stop the time at a, a, a particular point in time, and then you add uh, this this the the changes of the second period, and then you add the changes of the third period, and then you add the changes to the fourth uh, time period. Okay, so anytime uh, something happens, but then uh, as you can see, the, the trend is um, it's about the same. Uh, uh, Andres and Federica, I was going to comment that uh, compare this one with the uh, unemployment. Uh, <laughs> you 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 yeah. see how weird you can get. Yeah. Okay, especially for example, look at like uh, six. <laughs> look at like six, it's a whole bunch of spaghetti, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't know. And, and so Federica knows about spaghetti. <laughs> okay, look, look at like nine, uh -huh. like eight. Okay, uh, I mean, de definitely there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cro you know uh, cro cross correlations there. Okay, yeah. sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down. Depending on depending on, on, on the quarter. Uh, yeah. So probably we should be looking more at the autocorrelation plan, right? The ACF, because that's going to tell you exactly which are the lags that are significant. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. This, this one you have to, you know, uh, this one is good in terms of visualizing uh, more the lags within the periods. But for me, the one that really gives you more information is the ACF. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to see what's happening if I do ten. Uh, okay. If I do four, what is that? What what I thought what I think is quite interesting is that if you look at um at at, at the at the other charts at the you know the entire series, um you don't see that there's no clear trend right there's no clear like move that you can't really know what the the the, the entire series as a whole is doing, but. Uh -huh within each one of the of the years you can see um a seasonal um uh, yeah a seasonal the, 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 the seasonality of the of the chart you can see as yeah. Federico you were pointing out the up and down that goes up and q3 it starts going down, going down it probably breaks follow the housing market that's or that's seasonal um that's what I would guess yeah. but I thought that was very interesting. Um, uh, but but you know, but that's a that's a clear trend here. Okay, I don't I don't know if you can see it. If you, if you see the original plot of the time series, that's an upward trend 
until center point, and then it goes down. Okay, so you have both there. Okay, you have an upward trend, and then you have a downward trend. Okay, and you will see it in the decomposition. If you do the decomposition, you will see it that there's a trend. It goes down, and then it go it goes it goes down again. Yeah, I guess that okay. raises what to me would be kind of a philosophical question of what a trend mm -hmm. is meaning like if we look at if we look at two if we is, look is at two direction. data points well there's a trend right but then right. if we look at 1200 and it just goes all over the place then there is no trend see what, exactly you know, but, you know what but, I mean? but the trend is going to be let's say that you put a line okay you know you 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 uh draw a line in terms of the 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 average of those of those uh seasonalities you see that the average can go up, right? So it tells you that you know there's a trend there. Okay. You know, is the direction where you know the, the points are, are going are, are, are going to. Right. Okay. No, no, the seasonality I... is the is is the pattern, yeah. the pattern within within you know uh within the periods. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So now we have a look at what what is uh, what happened here? Okay, this is the autocorrelation. Okay, so we have the for each lag period. So you see what it does. That it uses the quarter and it goes forward. So you know we have just four quarters. You go forward to five, six, seven, eight, uh, hundred, and uh, it is most probably use the years. And uh, this function, uh, if I do say this and F2. I'm not, well, something happened. But uh, if I do the auto plot, what is showing is that, for example, these are the quarters, okay, as I, we have seen, the lag is here. Quarter one, uh, two, and. Uh, that, that, that's the lag, Federica. That, that's the lag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, X, the, the X axis lag. is the lag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the lag, but it, it, it makes a reference within these two elements. So from quarter two to quarter one, from quarter three. Yeah, the, the period is quarterly. That's what he's saying in the brackets. That's the, that's the period. Yeah. You know, from one point to the other, there's a quarter. But these are the lags on the X label, okay? And one of the things that you can see is that those you know little points you know those little li little lines that goes to a to a point there those are strong legs okay for example you always have lag zero right lag zero uh, is only is always one because it's within itself then you see lag one lag two lag three lag four that one mm -hmm. is very interesting okay because it kind of go, go, goes goes up right you know mm -hmm. it, 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 it you know it it, it kind of you know goes over the ones. Those are the ones yeah. that you have to be you know uh, uh, paying paying you know a little bit of attention because exactly. those are the ones that are the strongest. That it and they say okay, yeah. I'm highly correlated with my with my T zero with my value. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That is, it's showing that they are all correlated, so there is no negative correlation. There is no negative correlation, so they are all. Uh, the the difference within uh, this uh, time period are all correlated with each other. So the, uh, and the, there is like a peak uh, within a certain and, uh, yes. And that peak is the one that gives you more predictive power. Okay, uh -huh. because even though. Like you said, all of them are significant. 
those are the ones, the ones that are going up, okay? You know, that they go down, go up again, they go down, go up again. Those are the ones that give you the signal for the time series. Uh -huh. Okay, so for example, lag four, lag uh, eight there at uh, 12, uh -huh. every, four, every four periods, every four quarters, those are strong legs. Uh -huh. uh, so the, 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 that's it, I think it's, uh, um, there is a, uh, what is this uh, uh, thing in the book? They're showing you, for example, uh, in this example that we have seen, it's showing a different image of the lag. So here you can clearly see that this line is uh, in the middle of something that changes. Here are the, uh, the quarters, and within the, the a lag period, for, for example, the first from lag one and lag two, you can see that the, the quarter one has changed and uh, why well, quarter two is here, and as well as uh, quarter three, uh, this is quarter four, so quarter two and quarter three are here, and they change it within adding uh, lags, so uh, within changing times. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. look at lag. In this case, look at lag four that most of the points are trying to, you know, group into that diagonal, right? Because that diagonal uh -huh. represents a perfect correlation. That's what you want, uh -huh. okay? That all those points try to get it in line with that, you know, dashed line. As you can see, lag one is not, you know, very good. Lag two is not very good. Lag three is not very good. Lag four is, you know, is, is a good one because most of the points are right there. Okay, in that uh -huh. line. Sometimes you get the inverse. Okay, you get, you know, a, a negative, a correlation, and that's good. Okay, because you can you 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 want to have absolute uh, high correlations for your for your predictive model. Okay. So log four and log eight are the good ones then. Uh, from yeah. that uh, uh, visualization, yes, I would say log four and log eight are the ones that you want to incorporate in your model. And, and you can test it. Yeah. And you can test it because remember, this is a, a, a regression, right? So you can do a model with all those lags, right? Let's say one through eight. And then use it as predictors of your value with a regression, with an LM model. And you will see, probably you will see that lag four and lag eight are significant, okay? Compared to uh, other lags. You can test it. And as you can see, this lag max goes inside this the the autocorrelation function, so you can use it inside and establish, for example, lag max four, mm -hmm. and see. Then once you it's calculated, then you can plot it with uh, with the geom. But uh, I I'm, I wanted to like have a look at this uh, uh, autocorrelation uh, formulation, and. Mm -hmm. Basically, what does is um, sum the difference within uh, like something that happened in the in t and the average value, something that happened in in the previous period. Right, the lags. And, Those are the lags. Yes. Yeah. So the sum of all these differences uh, is then. Um, uh, proportionate to a general uh, medium uh, uh, deviation value. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the it, uh, the autocorrelation means um, that the the difference between two periods, the sum of the difference between two periods, and and they average is um, um, 
like uh, reproportionate on on the other uh, on the overall changes from 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 the mean. So it's like uh, a percentage value that you can uh, use to visualize if something is changing above or below uh, uh, the zero. Uh, so if it goes up to 100% or one, it's correlated, so effective changes because uh, th there is an effective meaning within the changes. Uh, if if negative, they are not correlated, so changes are not uh, uh, explicable. If 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 the correlation is negative, that means that you know when one goes up, the other one goes down. In other words, it's inverse. And if you have a high negative correlation, that's good too. too. Okay, because you have to think about absolutes here. Okay, the absolute value gives you the magnitude of that uh, correlation. So high positive, high negative, good. The ones that you don't want is zero. <laughs> okay, because zero, uh, there's no, there's no uh, a relationship there. There's no. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's why you see in that graph, in that graph of the ACF, you see some dotted lines around zero. Those are the significant, uh, you know, the, the, the confidence intervals, okay? So uh -huh. if your line is just around there, around that shadow area between those two uh, dash lines, that means it's not significant. In other words, it can be zero, uh, that autocorrelation. You want the ones that are above, above there, and also the peak ones, the ones that peak around. Right. Okay. Good, good discussion. <laughs> okay, we're learning, learning about lags. We're learning about the uh, other correlation, how to interpret the, the, the plots, etc. Very good. So um, I was checking for our next session. Okay, it's going to be chapter three. Um, uh, okay, so uh, Federica, you're going to be uh, you're going to be there in the you know the facilitator chair. So um, any questions uh, that you may have, you know, let me know because I have a lot of a lot, lot of material, you know, for this that I have been using for uh, you know a, 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 a seminar that, that I'm taking right now on time series, and uh, th there's a lot of information. But the main, the main foundation is how to interpret those, 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 those uh, visualizations, okay? So you get an understanding of what is happening in the time series, okay? That, that's fundamental. And then, you know, the traditional models that we're going to be uh, uh, doing in there, okay? All righty. So Excellent. thank you very much, Andres and Federica. Um, I'll see you uh, next Friday. Okay. Yeah. Have Thank a great you weekend. Guys. Bye. Thank you both. See you next Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.